Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a patient that presented with abdominal pain and fever. We can scroll through the axial images just to give you an overview of what we have here. And now let's go through what we have to make sure we evaluate, and that is the liver. And we can scroll all the way through the liver, the liver here. The spleen, we can look at that going back up now. But hang on, here we are. Here's a spleen. And pancreas. Here's pancreas. You can see the pancreatic tail right in the splenic hilum. Follow the pancreas back here. Pancreas looks normal, so liver, spleen, and pancreas appear normal. Gallbladder. Gallbladder. I see some very faint, high attenuation structures in the dependent aspect, which to me are very suspicious for gallstones. I hope you can see that. So here is the gallbladder right here, and this little kind of whiter, higher attenuation area in the dependent aspect of the gallbladder is very suspicious for gallstones. The adrenal glands, let's see. Here is the adrenal gland on the right. Here it is on the left. On the right, it's kind of like an upside down V. On the left, it's more like an upside down Y. So probably small stones in the gallbladder. Adrenal glands appear unremarkable. How about the kidneys? Kidneys look fine. I don't see any masses. There is symmetric enhancement of the renal cortex bilaterally. The left renal vein coming in from the left kidney into the IVC here. And the right renal vein is coming in here a little less prominent. Okay, so we've covered those major structures now. No sign of obstructive uropathy in the kidneys. Collecting systems appear normal. Abdominal aorta appears normal in size. A little tortuous, but that occurs with age, particularly if there's a history of hypertension. Let's go down a little bit farther. Remember, abdominal pain and fever we haven't found a reason for that yet. Now things start looking a little suspicious, don't they? Here we have the, let's follow this down, the left colon. You can see there are some small diverticula. There's one right there hanging off the left colon. There's another one, a little diverticulum popping off the descending colon, and here we are turning toward the sigmoid colon. There's a little diverticulum there. Here are two small diverticula. So sometimes you see a diverticulum and it has air in it, like here, that little black dot. This little black dot here is air in the diverticulum arising from the proximal sigmoid colon. And then here we have some diverticula that have enhancement, high attenuation centrally. We have several of those. Let's see, do we have oral contrast here? We don't really have any oral contrast to speak. No, none at all. So this high attenuation in the uh, diverticula is just debris or colon content. So you can see that there is a little high attenuation appearance to many of these uh, diverticula in this sigmoid colon. So again, we're starting at the sigmoid colon here. This is left colon here. And as we go downward, we encounter the sigmoid colon, which has a variable amount of redundancy. Sometimes it loops really broadly across the pelvis. This one does not. 
So we see an abnormality. Okay. So your job is to look at an abnormality like this and be able to describe it. And describing it entails saying that there is an abnormality and it is involving thus and such anatomy. In this case, there is an abnormality involving the sigmoid colon. And then I would go on to say that there is mucosal thickening because I don't see the lumen, even though the transverse diameter of what appears to be sigmoid colon is adequate that you'd expect to see segments of air or stool. So we have loss of the definition of the lumen of the sigmoid colon, unlike distal to it where you have a very narrow caliber and therefore you understand that you just have colonic wall that's collapsed without any significant content. Proximal to it you have the same kind of appearance of a small caliber which has little or no content in the lumen but here we have this wall thickening and not only do we have thickening of the wall of the colon but we have stranding. You see these lines these white lines radiating outward from this area of thickened sigmoid colon, that's edema. That is edema that is reflecting some type of inflammatory process, presumably here in the sigmoid colon. So now we have some descriptive terms. We can say that there is thickening of a segment of sigmoid colon, which is however long this is, six or eight centimeters, something like that probably. And there's adjacent stranding of the fat, suggesting an inflammatory process. There are also numerous diverticula in the sigmoid colon. And then finally, and importantly, we see this solitary, round, low attenuation, fluid-containing structure right in the central portion of this whole abnormal process. You can see that there is stranding emanating from this border of the, of the sigmoid colon radiating off toward the right and anteriorly, whereas this margin of the sigmoid colon is quite clean. And it so happens that right centrally positioned along that contour of the sigmoid colon, we have this little fluid collection. So the presence of diverticula with inflammatory changes suggests diverticulitis, and diverticulitis can appear in a number of different ways. This is pretty classic. And if you look at this fluid collection, then we can add the further statement that there is a small abscess measuring whatever this is, probably 1.4 centimeters or so diameter. So is in addition to inflammatory thickening of the mid-segment of the sigmoid colon and along with the pericolonic stranding anterior and right lateral to that area, we see a small fluid pocket centrally indicating a diverticular abscess. So this is a classic, typical case of diverticulitis. The sigmoid colon is the most common site. It can occur in the right colon. In fact, this patient does have a couple of small diverticula right here, right here, right here and here, small diverticula of the right colon. And here's another one here arising from the right colon. So along with sigmoid diverticulitis with abscess formation, we have diverticulosis, just meaning that there are diverticula in the colon, colonic diverticula. And that's summarized as diverticulosis which means there are diverticula as opposed to diverticulitis, which means that there is an inflammatory infectious process that presumably has emanated from a diverticulum. 
Okay, so once again, significant thickening of a segment of the mid portion of the sigmoid colon with adjacent stranding extending anteriorly and toward the right. There is a small fluid pocket centrally in this area measuring about 1.4 centimeters. Findings are consistent with diverticulitis with a small diverticular abscess. Okay, that's it.